Okay, what's up folks, it's TJ here with Ravi Muscle and I wanted to take about 10 minutes of your time to introduce you to something unique that I've actually come up with and it's not, uh, you know, most of my information that I get is either stolen or borrowed or used from another coach, professional, um, the scientific consensus, right? Um, you know, nearly all of my stuff is, you know, I stand on the shoulders of giants, so everything, all of my information has come from research, from other areas that I've you know borrowed and adapted and done whatever to fit my needs. But since I've been working with amateur, professional and semi-professional rugby players for over a decade now, I feel like I'm in a good position to finally actually produce something unique from myself. And it's about time that I've done that. And um, I mean, it's a fucking pyramid, so it probably has, someone else has already done this sort of idea before, but this is something that I've just decided to come up with to explain how I would go about training um, for rugby performance in terms of the physical preparation. So this video will just be an introduction to this pyramid and then we'll carry on with this video series to uh, go more in depth with each level and the training methods that that will encompass and how you will go about doing that to improve your rugby performance. But this one is just the introduction. So. Before I even get into the introduction, what you have to realize is that this is just a physical preparation pyramid. Physical preparation is only one part of your rugby performance preparation, how you can become the best rugby player that you can be. Um, yes, you, you know, the fitter athlete you can be, the more potential you have to be better, but you also have to understand that technical preparation, tactical preparation, and mental preparation are also still... Um, are completely unique and just as important components to become the best rugby player that you want to be. Technical preparation being skills and whatnot, tactical preparation being your decision making, what you would choose and why, and then your mental preparation was to how you can execute on those things during uh, a game, on game day. And so this pyramid is almost in its own little vacuum, right? So this is just to deal with the athleticism and the physicality and your physique that you are trying to get in order to become the best player that you can be. Um, and so with that also in mind that like, I know it says, I said that this exists in a vacuum, but nothing really exists in a vacuum. Likewise of all of these different components, these physical components, they don't exist in a vacuum either. Just to say, just because you are working one of these components, for like for example, if you are just to work on aerobic capacity, that doesn't mean that you can't simultaneously work on core strength and stability or something else. These are all very much interrelated, just like that your physical preparation is going to be interrelated with your technical preparation, your tactical preparation, right? Your rugby skill and tactical training that you do with your club is still going to use some of these aspects to improve you as a rugby player. All right, so let's get into the pyramid itself. Um, it's very much a fit pro thing to do is to put things into a little pyramid to explain the order of importance and magnitude and whatnot. But I really do believe this is exactly how it works. And so we kick off with level one, which is just being a overall better, and that's not like from a moral standpoint, it's just a better performing human being, right? So we're looking at movement control, how you move, if you like, are an awkward mover or a lanky mover or someone that doesn't have good biomechanics, you're going to be held back by that. Likewise, if you are skinny, if you just don't have enough muscle, and we could put body composition into that, but this is talking about training. So your fat levels are more measured by your, or more controlled by your diet rather than the, the training that you do. So if you're fit enough, which is the next one here, aerobic capacity, you know, your body fat levels don't matter too much, but in order to get fit, you're probably gonna lose your body fat level. So th this could be changed to from hypertrophy to body composition, but essentially your muscle to fat to body weight ratio, right? The more muscle that you hold, the more potential you have for everything else. And that's what this foundational level of being a better performing human is about. The better you move, the more muscularity and better your body composition is, and the more aerobic capacity you have, the better everything else becomes and the more potential you have to improve upon everything else. A bigger muscle has more strength potential. Doesn't necessarily mean that it's always going to be stronger. You will get smaller guys that have more strength than you know someone that is a little bit more muscular. But that person that is more muscular still has more potential to be stronger and even at their baseline level, like the lowest a really big muscular person can be in terms of strength, 
is still going to be more uh, stronger and more powerful than someone who is skinny and has absolutely no muscle. Um, and if you're going to doubt me on saying that you know rugby isn't about bodybuilding, look at the South African team that won the World Cup. Here, I'll put up a picture here to, to explain that uh, or to highlight that as best we can. So understand that these three things are not only the um, foundation for everything else, it gives you the greater potential, but you also have the most amount of potential to improve upon these. You can continue to improve your aerobic capacity, your hypertrophy, your body composition, and your movement control almost forever. So we can extend this pyramid out wider and wider and wider, and it almost has a limitless potential, which then gives us more potential to build up this pyramid to be taller, to make us a better rugby athlete. And so most of your time should be spent either directly or indirectly trying to improve upon these three things during your rugby training career. Um, the reason that you will also see that a lot of professionals, you, you, people will argue that you know professional athletes and all those other people might not always be training these three aspects is because they have those already. They're, there's a reason that they're professional is because these things, these three things are already in place. So they don't have to train them because they're already they've already got a really wide base of their pyramid to begin with. They, they, that's not their most important training component. Whereas a, a common approach for an amateur trainer would be to just constantly improve these three things anyway. And you could almost spend all of your training career in this area and exponentially still become a better rugby player and continually becoming a better rugby player. Um, so that's level one, right? The wider we get, or the more that we work on this, the wider the base of our pyramid, the more potential we have, but also still, the bigger our pyramid is in general. So we can continue to improve upon those um, almost indefinitely, and they're going to indefinitely give us more ability to improve upon the, the next level, which is speed and power output, core strength and stability, and an absolute strength. This is level two. This is becoming a better athlete. Um, understand that this is level two because these three things will only... Um, be potentiated by the bottom three things. If you don't move very well at all, doesn't matter how strong your core is, you're still not going to have that functional output that normal core strength would be able to give you. If you are you know, skinny, then that's going to hold you back on your amount of absolute strength that you're going to have um, indefinitely. And also, it's also going to stop you from being, you know, it's going to hold you back in terms of your speed and power output if you've got smaller legs. Yes, you can be fast, but you could be faster if you have bigger, stronger legs. Um, you also aren't going to be able to perform time and time and time again in a rugby situation if you're strong, got a strong core and really powerful, if you have no aerobic capacity, if you can't continually, to, uh, if you can't continually perform those different aspects, right? If you are, you know, if, you, if you're really strong, you've got a really strong one rep max bench and squat, yet you know, you can only perform for, you know, that's, that's all you can do, you've got no aerobic capacity at all, then you're going to be useful for about one minute total in, in, a, in an entire rugby game, right? So maybe three 20 second periods where you can perform your best. And then the rest of your time spent recovering, but because you've got poor aerobic capacity, you're just not going to improve. Um, so these three things, whilst they're really, really uh, beneficial for you as a rugby player, they are massively held back by these three bottom things. So the better you have these things, the better you're going to improve on your level two. Um, but also, you know, they are they do have their place and they can definitely make you a better rugby player. So you should spend a good deal of time in this zone um, every now and again, switching back from level one to level two to try and pretend to try and reach the potential that your level one training aspects have given you. And then finally after that, so this is actually, sorry, Go back. Level two is to do with being a better athlete. So, right, so we've got better level one, being a better human, just in general, making everything else better. Then you've got being a better athlete. So you could go from this and you could look at the bottom part of this pyramid and you could just be a great athlete in all sorts of sports. Um, and then your, your other work is gonna, going to improve you as a rugby player. Um, and then in terms of your physical preparation, we've got our icing on the cake, which is SS. Special strength, footwork, and mobility is half of it, and then the other half is mental toughness and anaerobic endurance. Again, I'll get into these in separate videos um, specifically, but understand that this stuff is just the icing on the cake, and it's only going to be potentiated if the other stuff is, um, has been 
has been reached already. So if you've already achieved a decent amount of absolute strength, now we can look at special strength, right? Now we can look at things such as, uh, I don't know, line out specific barbell movements where you dip in and doing a perfect line out lift, or if we're looking at perfect footwork to try and step around a blade. All this stuff only works if we've met our other potential. And so you'll see a lot of um, training and you'll see even some of my uh, advertising and the stuff that I advocate for is you know rugby specific training. But that doesn't mean that we spend all of our time doing special strength. Um, special strength has its place, but as you can see, that place is half of, or part of, a half of the icing on the cake. There's so much more that we should spend our training time doing in order to, be get, to become a better rugby player um, without just spending time doing you know specific scrum rack training or all those sorts of things. And when we're talking about special strength, we're not talking about skill preparation, right? So if you want to become, if you want to get better at rucking, it's one thing doing like ruck specific gym movements, you know, medicine ball dip throws, those sorts of things. That's one thing. But actually going and doing your technical preparation, learning how to ruck better and more efficiently and practicing that time and time and time again is going to give you the better um, output. It's going to make you improve more as a rugby player than doing the special strength stuff. Um, and it doesn't, you know, you're, and you're getting better at rucking because you're practicing the skill of rucking as opposed to trying to improve your physical uh, your physical capacity to perform that, right? Hopefully that makes sense. It gets a little bit technical, but I, I'm trying to explain it so that anyone that wants to improve their rugby performance can watch this video and understand what, they, what I mean, right? So if you're getting better at rucking from doing special strength, great. But that's only going to be a slight edge that's going to give you your better edges by being um, fitter, uh, bigger, moving better, working on all these other things first. And then maybe we can do our special strength or even better, we can work on our skills. Beating that point to death, I think you get that right now. And then mental toughness and anaerobic endurance. And this is when we're looking at like those gross preseason videos that you'll see. Like you'll see England's um, uh, 2019 World Cup prep feature a lot of this stuff again that's not because that's the most important thing for them but that's probably because all of this other stuff is already taken care of so that's the pyramid and that's the the three levels as to and how you should divide your time up and what you should be looking at to improve as a rugby player i will say that there's a foundation hold on i'll write it up here there's a foundation of genetics, habits, and consistency. Again, how, how cliched FitPro is this to put a foundation underneath a pyramid as well now. Um, these three things, so your genetics, your habits, and your consistency will control how your, like your rate of improvement. Some people that have great genetics maybe have some of this stuff already taken care of, so much so um, that they never have to uh, actually train those components. You'll see a lot of professional rugby players that were freaks as junior athletes before they ever hit a gym. You'll see some professional rugby players that are bigger than other players and they've never you know, trained weights before. They've never trained to get bigger muscles. So then they would spend their time on other things, but because they've got this foundation of tremendous gen genetics, they're able to focus their time on other areas and become better rugby players uh, because of that or already start at a higher level with a decent base in their pyramid to begin with than some other folk. Habits, same thing. Right, if it's your habit to walk or to run to work every day, then you're going to build up a good aerobic capacity. If it's your habit to eat better, then that's going to give you more energy to train all of these different things. And maybe I should have put diet instead of habits, but get the same. Get you get the point, right? That um, your day-to-day -day habits, your stress levels, your, how much you booze, you know, all these sorts of things are going to impact your rate of improvement and how much potential you have to build out this pyramid. And then finally, we've got consistency. So how much you consistently hammer home each aspect is going to significantly improve the rate that you will uh, expand this pyramid at. It's also going to um, dictate like how well you can improve in terms of exponential. Like if you target your movement control for a week and then forget about it and then go back to it another few weeks later and every, you know, becomes the flavor of the month for every now and again, then yeah. You're going you're gonna to make slight improvements, but they're going to be really gradual compared to if you just consistently targeted one area, then systematically moved on to another area, and then systematically moved on to another area. And that, my friends, is known as periodization. <laughs>
So you hear a lot of um, you know sports science trainers and um, strength and conditioning coaches talk about periodization. It's because it will exponentially improve your ability to actually get consistent results from your training. It's just about having a plan. It's about understanding what aspect you're trying to uh, train and then hammering home those points and hammering home this training method and hammering home the lifestyle of being a rugby player that wants to improve um, is what is going to long-term make you a better rugby player. So within these eight components of the pyramid, as well as the three components of the foundation, you have a really encompassed idea of what you should be looking at as a rugby player who wants to improve. And hopefully this really explains it quite well. I'll go in depth on level one in the next video and then level two after that. So stay tuned. Let me know if you have any questions or thoughts on this in the comments below. Actually, I would love if I can get some feedback. Give me some comments. Let me know what you think of this. This is my, you know, this is my first unique uh, thought maybe ever that I've ever had, right? It's actually something that I've come up with myself and I'd love to have some feedback as to what you guys think. If you think there's some errors that I've made here or something that I've overlooked, I'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, um, actually, in addition to giving the video a thumbs up, subscribing to the channel for more information, but giving this video a thumbs up really does help the algorithms, helps the channel out and helps me expand upon this idea and help you guys out as rugby athletes who want to improve. Other than that, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.